You know who it is, the horror flick, dig a ditch, super six, big Mitch. And I'm kicking in those with 03 O's. And I'm bringing 28 101s because we Vegas sons. It's the Meadowlands. You and the Meadows, man. 530 babies. You know what raised me. Bolo Yang. And you can't fade me. <laughs> Welcome to Vegas Chronicles with your man, the horror flick, super six, dig a ditch, big Mitch. And today. Like any other day, we kick actual factuals, man. You know what we do over here on this channel, man. We don't play around. You know what I mean? Um, things coming along, too. I'm going to get the intro up and, you know, piece by piece, we go piece it up. But check this out. I want to start this off by asking y'all a question, okay? And um, I don't know if y'all heard the uh, interview. If you haven't, go check out that interview from DJ FOS, Streets of Vegas, and it's, it's, he did a, he had a, a conversation with the founder of the GQ, Carl Wesley. And um, it's a very good interview. And shout out to the legend, Carl Wesley, man. Uh, I've been telling y'all he was the founder of the GQs. And he put everything in perspective and even, you know, uh, said a few things that was uh, brand new to me. But, uh, you know, I know Carl Wesley. And uh, matter of fact, last time me and Carl Wesley was together, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, it was, I think, 2012, me, uh, Carl, and Doc, Doc Rock. We was together in a white van. Carl had a white van. And it was on the same day that the incident with Sweet Pea happened, you know, when uh, Sweet Pea got shot uh, over there by uh, Tallulah Twos. And uh, because we was up there with my cousin Mackie at Doolittle. And the marshals came up there and told us not to go over there on H because they had it all blocked off. They told everybody at Doolittle because they had the basketball tournament going on at Doolittle. And they say, you know, you can go on A Street because, it, you know, it's blocked off. It was a shooting over there. And Carl Wesley, he took me home, you know, and I, when my grandma stayed over there in the old Madison Terrace, you know, right there off uh, J Street facing that church. But, uh, you know, me and Carl, uh, we go way back, you know. Um, but he, like I say, he said some interesting things. And for me, I want to I piggyback a little bit off what he said. Now, um, I didn't know that the formation of the GQ started with three people. And one of them was a, was a Tatum, you know, that came from the hood. I'm not going to get all up into that. Carl could tell, you know, if y'all y'all need to go check out that interview, DJ FOS Streets of Vegas. And this is an interview with Carl Wesley. And he tells you exactly how the GQs came into existence and why. And I, I, like I said before in my other videos, I told you that boy Paps was lying. I told y'all that. And Carl put it right there. I didn't know that, you know, the GQ started off with three people. This is his words. And he said they came out in uh, late 79, 79, something like that. Look, when it comes to the timeline, you know, I can't argue with, you know, no general, especially no general of they hood. I was a baby when all this happened, you know. Um, like I say, my father left in 79. We didn't know nothing of no GQs. And the GQs came out after the Ace of Spades. You know, it was the Ace of Spades, you know, uh, uh, then as far as black games go. It was the Ace of Spades and then the GQs, you know. Um, that would mean that the Ace of Spades had to come out uh, late, you know, like, what, 77, 76, somewhere up in that end. You know, so I, I, you know, that's why the OGs got the, you know, like Carl Wesley, you know, that's why, you know, they, they come forth and they, they get a real history. You know, they can go further back than I can, you know, and uh, the fight that won the world with the, the PBs and all that, you know, um, he gets into all that. Y'all need to go check out that dope interview. But one thing I want to say, when uh, DJF, DJFOS asked him about Donna Street, and how Donna Street came into existence. If you notice, you, what, you, what you're going to notice is, is that he don't really answer that question. Because just like, you know, um, a lot of people didn't know this. I knew this. Ronnie Morris, in rest in peace, was about the girths before he was a GQ. I knew that. The Morrisons, period, is about the Gs. A lot of Morrisons. So I knew that. You know, and the incident with him and Lobo, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, and, you know, the, what, you know when he told, you know, the Gershons that he was going to become a GQ, 
you know, it was an incident between Ronnie Morris and Lobo, you know what I'm saying, where Ronnie Morris and took, got slit across his face with a razor. Uh, and, and that's, 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 that was, uh, you know, uh, known, you know, really known, highly known, you know what I'm saying. And, uh, uh, the Donna Streets, see, when it come to that, the reason why it's hard for him to answer that, and I keep it real, that's why now I love, you know, to get on a video, you know, with, with, with Carl, man, you got a dialogue, Carl, you know what I'm saying, man, you go way back from when you stayed in Kerry Arms, right downstairs from Lil Gus. You remember the incident with the security guards up over there? When Jody Gyro snatched that dude rope off his neck, off that from that car, and, and, and the security came over there because we was being real loud and tripping, and Terrell Pearl got into it with the security guards, and them same dudes that Jody Gyro snatched that rope off of, they came back blowing, and security started blowing, and we all ran in the house, in your house downstairs, remember? And you went in the oven and got that thing and went out the door, back door. And <laughs> Yeah, we used to kick it with Carl, man. He thought, you know, it was all love, you know what I mean? But anyway, the Dumpner Streets, the reason why it was hard for him, you know, he didn't really answer that, you know, and it's because the Dumpner Street is a combination of GQs and, and, and Gershons. Why do you think, and he could tell you, the GQs came into existence because the Gershons. You know what I mean? And, it, and the GQs became a real big gang, you know, and they was one of the only ones, you know, besides the Pyrus before, you know, you know, when, when they came into existence and the PBs and the hood. But, you know, they was one of the only gangs that can, you know, really because they had the numbers to deal with the girls. You know what I mean? But uh, the reason why. The Donna Street Crips and the Gershons was cool because Carl I'll tell you the GQs and the Gershons ain't really never never been cool. The Sydney Sioux GQs, the uh, West Side GQs, the Northtown GQs, the Baby GQs. I didn't know they had GQs in Henderson. I didn't. I know Serpo went to Henderson. You know Serpo was an OG. I know he went to Henderson after he stole the Gershon guns, but I didn't know that that it was GQs in Henderson. That was the first time I ever heard of that. But the reason why the Gershons and the Donna Street Crips was cool was because original members of the Donna Street Crips used to be Gershons. There are original members of the Donna Street Crips that was Gershons, hands down. Everybody, that's not no secrets. That's why it was hard for him to say how the Donna Streets come into existence. I was there when they formed. I was there when they formed, and one dude, and one guy that in particular that wasn't really for the alliance, he didn't want nothing to do with it because he had a GQ mentality. Was Lump? Lump didn't want nothing to do with that. Lump had a GQ mentality, but it was a bunch of reputable Donna Streets day ones that was there when they formed it that came straight from the Gerson. That's where the relationship lied. It was a family thing. It was family relations. You see? That's what brought the Gersons down on Donna. Family relations. So it's not no big old thing about that. So I could clear that up. You know, that's how Donna Street came into existence. If you look at the first, the first formation of the first Donna's, who came up with that name, Donna Street Crip? See, that's history. Who came up with that name, Donna Street Crip? A lot of people don't know that, but it was Dan Loke. That picture that they took by that door up over with that little DSC in the middle of them. Y'all remember that? It's an old picture that they took, and it was like five, about seven of them, and they had the little DSC on the door right in the middle of them. Then with, and, they, and their hands was like this. They was throwing up little C's like this here. It wasn't nothing but a handful of them. But they main ones, some of their main ones, honchos, came straight from the G's. That's why we came down there because we still looked at them as homeboys. Even though they had this new thing called Donna Street Crip going on over there on Donna. That's how the Gersons and the Donnas became cool. And that was back in 1987. That was back in 1987. 
me and Blanca grew up together. Me and Cassio. I, I know I know all the original ones. I don't even have to go there with our you can look at my other videos and, and I and I told and I spoke on how Down the Street came into existence. You know. But you know, shout out to Carl Wesley. I did not know that there were GQs in Henderson. I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. But he really put it out there, you know, on how, you know, he talked about a lot of, of peoples, you know. Um, and he mentioned the Lockhart's, you know. He said he fought the whole Lockhart family, you know what I'm saying. He probably did. But all, I, all I'm saying is this right here, you know. Um, and that's why I, I love to go, you know, live with Carl. You know, if we can hook up, man, uh, get an interview in, let's do that, man, and speak this Vegas history. Because you know my, you know who, you, you already know who I am and, who, and you already know about my father. So you you know we can we can get on there and we can we can speak you know it's all love you know what I mean but uh you said you got out with the whole Lockhart family you know what I'm saying you probably did I ain't got nothing to do with that that's in the north that's y'all business but I'm gonna just be so 100 with you man and I just got to say this I'm just being 100 man and and, and I I never heard and I and you know when you when you when you when you about the business because you know you know the Q's the GQs had hand guys the northern GQs you know from Dino you know to Carl. You know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of guys down there that, that, that got out. You know, Big George Gordon, all them dudes. But I'm going to just be honest with you. When you say you got down with the Lockhart's, I ain't never heard about nobody whooping Rock Sheba. Curtis Lockhart. I ain't never heard nobody whooping Rock Sheba, man. Coming close to whooping Rock Sheba. I'm for real. I know y'all got George Gordon down there. And he a, he a beast when it comes to the hands. You know what I'm saying? He whooped Butterbean. You know what I'm saying? So he, he can get down. George Gordon can get down. But I just ain't never heard. Back in the heyday, I just never heard of nobody whooping Rock Sheba, man. I haven't. You know what I'm saying? And and, and like you said, if you got down with him, you got down with him, man. But I, you know, I, I'm going to leave that alone. That's on, you know, that's a Northtown GQ thing, you know, a hood thing, you know. But uh, y'all check that interview out, man, with Carl Wesley, man. Uh, the GQ, you know, that the GQ of all GQs, you man, the man that started, it, you know, the GQ thing, you know, he didn't mention, you know, uh, the Sydney Sue GQs, Tangy and, and Baby Huey and, and, and Pony Boy and all them. He ain't really too much get into that or the, or the Bonanza Village Baby GQs. And he also said that the West Coast was GQs. Now, you know, I'm going to be honest with you on that too. Um, I ain't never known Marble Manor to be GQs. Never. I know Marble Manor to be West Coast Crips. That came from San Diego. You know, that came from San Diego. West Coast Crips is in San Diego. I never heard of the Marble Manor being GQs. But I heard of West Coast Crips. And just like Mickey Simmons, you know, came from Dago and bought Paru out here. You know, that's how Paru came out here. You know, now, the Parus is a combination of the Bang Bang Gang and some of um, was West Side GQs. That's their story. And I'm not going to get into that. You got to holler at the Parus about that. I already did a thing on that, man. And when you try to really document history, it's just your opinion on how you see things. And, and just because you see things a certain way don't mean it was that way. You know what I mean? So that's their his that's their history and they can get into that, but I never heard of no GQs being in Marble Man. Now, if you know something I don't know, that's why you OG and you you know you know, but I never heard of that. You know. I'm from the West Side. I'm born and raised. I never heard of no GQs being in Marble Man. But like I say, hey, y'all might know something I don't know. You know, but anyway, you know, moving on. Y'all check out that interview. It's DJ FOS Streets of Vegas. Look that up. Uh, it's an interview with Carl Wesley. You know, um, it's it's a it's a it's a very insightful I interview, and it gives you more uh, uh, insight into the formation of Crippin and how it came to Vegas and and who started it, orchestrated it, and stuff like that. So if you really want to hear from the the horse's mouth. Check out that interview with DJ FOS in the streets of Vegas with Carl Wesley, man, the general. But anyway, uh, yeah, moving along. You know, uh, I don't know, you know, if y'all, uh, you know, I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna just go on and say, say, say it, man. And 
I don't want to hurt nobody feelings, and I'm, I'm just saying it in general. But it, it's that time, you know. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I, I was, you know, dealing with my my son yesterday, man, and, and you know, I just got, I just, I just, you know, I, it's so sad that you know the world that we live in, you know, it, it's to the point now to where, you know, we don't really let us, you know, child go nowhere, you know, and do nothing because the the behavior of people. You can't take your 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 child to a park that's supposed to be neutral. When I was coming up, it was places you didn't go, but it was places you did go because it was a neutral place where stuff didn't happen. We all had areas where we can go, you know, to where we can get away from the madness and, and just spend time with our family and, and our children without worrying about, you know, no bull crap. Nowadays, you can't even, you can't go nowhere without something stupid or stupidity following you, man. Nowhere. I mean, nowhere. And that's the sad part, you know. But uh, we got to really start talking to one another, man, and figure out what we go do. Because it, it, it's, it's to the point now, man, if, 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 if we're going to be here as a people, if we're going to allow ourselves to have a future, then we have to start taking the initiative and we got to start doing things, man, to ensure that our children have a chance to succeed and have the necessary tools that they need to be able to compete in a, a in, in a changing world, man. You know, well, well, they don't want to. You know, this we 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 starting to move in a real dangerous, you know, era in time now, man. And man, you know, and his imperfection. It seemed like we have succumbed to our imperfection, you know, especially of our nature. All the hatred, all the violence, you know, that's going on that we allow to fester. A lot of it in places like Mississippi, Alabama, St. Louis, Baltimore, New York, Chicago, all these places like that, Atlanta, Cali, where we allowing you know, our children to just, I don't, man, look, man, self-annihilation, man. We can't blame that on no, no cricket system that's rigged to keep us and hold us down. We have to really look at it for what it is. It's our own doing our own. If we want to look up, if we want to look at injustice, we have to look within ourselves because the injustice we suffering from is coming from just us. You know, it, it's really coming from just us. We have became everything we've hated. We have became everything that our ancestors fought to liberate us from. We have became that. We have became our own nightmare. When people leave their house, they not worried about some man on a horse trying to do them harm. They worried about people that look like them in hoodies, running around with stuff they're not supposed to have, doing something to them, trying to take their car, trying to take what look they have. They worrying about their own when we should be putting our stuff together, trying to have something, trying to build a better community. But instead of putting our, our ideas together and our monetary funds together, to build a community or some type of form of infrastructure that we can give our kids so we can have something we can call our own, we would rather take from one another or hate on one another if one of us got something and the other one don't. Instead of asking them how you get that, teach me how to do that. I'd rather hate on you and say that you think you are all that. Or I'd rather come up with a scheme, even if I'm your friend, to try to get you. They call it back doing. And that's sad because not only do you have to worry about your own people, people that look like you, harming you, but even when you in that life, you got to worry about your own homeboy doing something to you. Not the people that you were told were your enemies that's from over there or just from over there. You got to worry about the dude standing on the side of you with the same color you got on. You can't, you can't turn your back on him. 
Because nine times out of ten, he going to do you. Why you over there looking at them? Thinking of thinking they trying to do something to you. It's the one on the side of you the whole time. See, that's what we need to understand. Where we come up with this sick type of mentality. See, it was a one, it, it was a point in time where we didn't have nothing but each other. We didn't have nothing but each other. And we were thriving. All we had was one another. You see? And it's just like that when you think about, you know, growing up in the neighborhoods. Before all that, you know, when them drugs and stuff was, was, was introduced into our neighborhoods and all that old stuff. When, when, when we grew up as kids and we were eating syrup sandwiches and sugar sandwiches and freeze cups and popcorn balls and mambas and cherry clams and Johnny Apple seeds and Boston baked beans and all that. When we were growing up eating that stuff, nine laters and bubblicious and, uh, and, 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 and all that old, you know, when we grew up eating all that stuff, Mike and Ike's. You know what I'm saying? Bubble issues. Uh, what's that club called? Bubble Blast or whatever. When we was growing up eating all that, when we had nothing, we was the best of friends. We could trust one another. If I had a sandwich, I gave you half of it. Hmm? We split a quarter pot, tiki punch. See? When we ain't had nothing but each other. What was mine was yours. What was yours was mine. See? But as time went on, we stopped looking at each other as brothers and started looking at each other as, as homies. See, we went from family to being homies. Then we went from homies to merely being associates. Then we went from being associates to being, I don't know what you call it now. Because you can't call off, you, you don't know what it is now. You don't know if you if that's your homie, if that's your enemy. You don't know what you got. You got frenemies. Because the same dudes you be flicking up with, holding y'all drink, standing next to each other with, put your arm around like this here, be the same one that do you. Be the same one that do you. One way or the other, man. You know? And, and and honestly, man, I'm gonna be. I'm at the point in my life now, man, where I don't care about what other people are doing in the streets as long as I'm not doing it. I have to be worried about myself, not another man. And that's our problem. We still got our nose in other people's business instead of focused on what we got in front of us. Some of us gotta right our wrong. Some of y'all still out here judging people with dirty hands. For real. You out here judging people with dirty hands. Clean up your mess. Wash your hands before you get to point out everybody else's filth. You wash your hands. It's a lot of that going on, man. It's a lot of that going on. It's a lot of people that still, in spite of the fact, and they see it in their face. They see what's going on. They see who doing what, and they know what, what, what's happening, but they still don't want to face reality. They still want to put the blame at somebody else's feet. When y'all going to wake up and realize this is a us problem, not a them problem? This is a us problem, man. Y'all so hard when y'all go at one, one another, but when it comes to helping one another, how can, we be so, how can we be so timid when it comes to helping one another? Why we always got to talk tough or talk at one another instead of to one another? You ain't got to tuck your tail. It ain't tucking your tail just to talk to another person and treat another person with respect, man. Don't you want to be treated with respect? Everybody want to be treated with respect but don't want to give respect. That's the problem, man. People got to understand, man, being in the streets, is, you know, listen, homie, it don't validate you. Being tough don't validate you because you never could be tough enough. It's going to always be somebody tougher than you. If you don't believe me, just stroll. Just look, take a drive by, down there by the cemetery. You're going to see all the Billy badasses. That's where they go. The cemetery is full of Billy badasses. 
For real, man. Humble yourself. Teach your children how to humble themselves. And just because you humble yourself, that don't mean you weak. The best fighters in the world are people who really do not like to fight. Go back and look at some of Iron Mike old tapes before he had a major fight when he was with Gus DeMauro. Before Mike, before Iron Mike fought, he used to cry. Go back and look at some of, and, 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 and look at, and see how Gus DeMauro used to have to console him. The best fighters are the ones that know how to avoid fights, that know how to avoid conflict. Napoleon Bonaparte said the greatest battles are won when not a lick of blood has been shed. Let that sink in, man. Let that sink in. If we want to stop the bloodshed, man, we got to roll up our sleeves, lace up our boots, and get out here and get our kids out the streets, man. And it ain't going to be easy because the gravitational pull of the streets, the lure of the streets, the vanities of the streets is overwhelming. Anyone can succumb to them. I was in them for a long time and lost my freedom because of the streets and lost a gang of childhood friends because of the streets. The streets ain't never gave me nothing but high blood pressure, PTSD, a long, extensive prison sentence of messed up reputation, and delusional thoughts. That's all the streets ever gave me. It never gave me nothing good. 